Hello and welcome back to part 20 of how to make a hex tile board game in Unreal Engine 5. Um, in the last couple of videos we've been working on doing some of the debugging um, and cleaning up all the actions that can occur after an attack. So attacker wins, defender wins, attacker wins with or without casualties, and vice versa for the defender. What I want to work on now in this video, since I think we've got all that flushed out, is actually starting to build some of the mechanics around capturing the, the sacred sites. So the way it's going to work in my game is if you hold two of these three sites at any point, you win. So what we want to do is start to build out the, the tracking for that. Right, we got the moving mechanics, and when we move on to one of these sites, uh, we get it highlighted like this. Um, right, so we can see it's blue, and then when, when red moves, which i got to get my... What is this one? This should change it over to red. Yep. So what I want to do is maybe have some sort of score card on the HUD um, and then have that being populated by the capturing of these sites. And then when we reach the two out of the three um, and win the game, right, then everybody gets a game over uh, widget. So let's get working on that. And I think where I want to start is actually in our HUD widget. Um, I've got mine up already, but um, let's see. In our A main widgets, we should have HUD widget. This is what we got right now, right? Selected units populate here. Uh, the scroll dice button. Okay, yeah, I saw that visible. If you have this, you probably don't need it. If you don't have it, you don't need this. I think the top right, though, is going to be a good place to, to have this. And I think which what might be the best way to do this is let's actually make um, a, another widget, and then we'll have it come in here. So in our widgets folder, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to do user interface, widget blueprint, and we'll call this uh, player card. I'll open this up, and I'm going to do a couple things in here. I'm going to switch the top right from screen, no. This one, this fill screen, let's switch this to custom on screen. And I don't know what to do for dimensions yet. This is like 500 by 200. We'll play with this later. Um, and then the first thing I want to do is I'm going to grab a size box. I'm going to drop that in here. And override width and height and just make this 500 by 200. And within here, let's put an overlay and have the stretching. And then maybe grab a border. In this border, let's stretch this. I don't know what I'm going to do with this border yet, but let's grab a brush color and let's just make it a little transparent and maybe make it like a darker gray. So this is, we'll just do the background. And all I really want in here, at least for now, is just give me the player name. Um, and actually, what we'll do with this color, let's not do brush. I'm going to reset this. Not brush color. Let's do... Oh, no. I do want brush. Okay, so let's make this gray again and 0.5. We'll make this background the color of the player. Um, let's grab a horizontal box. And have this stretch all the way. Then what I want to do is a text. And this will be like our player name. And we'll align that in the middle. Set to auto. And then on the right, I don't know how I want to do this yet, but for the placeholder, I'm going to do... I'm going to do another horizontal box. I think it will make this look a little bit cleaner. And then text. Actually, you know what? We don't need this horizontal box. We'll do this a little bit different. Let's replace this with child. Well, two horizontal boxes. And this is going to be like zero out of three, right, by default. Um, and what that really means is this is going to be how many sacred sites do you have. So player name, number of sacred sites. And then these will update as you capture, and then everybody can see. What we might do later is add some more stats like how much gold a player has, you know, how many units, maybe stuff like that. But we'll just have a nice, simple placeholder for now.
And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Where's font size? Uh, yeah, I made it like 36. And this, I don't know, 32, a little bit smaller. Okay, now let's flip over into the graph. And I want two variables. First will be player name. Do this as a text. And this needs to be instance editable and expose on spawn. So when we create this widget, we need to populate this variable. And we'll go to default of player name. Not that I think that really matters, but uh, we'll do it anyways. And then when we click on here, we can bind that to this. So text, up to text, under binding, just create, grab player name. For the other one, we will do another variable, also text. We'll just do number of sacred sites. And let me think about what the best way to do this is. Mm. We'll do this via function. So we'll make a function update number of uh, sacred sites. We'll drag this and do a set. And then what we want to do is pull off this new format text. And this gets, um, this will look a little weird, but this is actually a really nice tip to learn. So what you do is you input these little squigglies, um, this one. Hopefully you can see that all right. It's like the bracket, but with the little arrow on the end. I'm not sure what those are called. Um, and these are your inputs. So we'll do like one of them as owned, right? And then close and then an, um, do space, splat, slash space. And then another one, uh, total end. So, uh, hopefully you can see this, but it's the, the little brackets. Um, and you call them wh whatever you want these variables to be. I spelled owned wrong. There we go. So, we got owned and total. This kind of went out of weird order. There we go. Yeah, so the total will, will almost always be three in our cases. Um, I think we'll have that driven from this event, and then we can do some logic if we ever need to to do different but what we'll do is let's add two inputs both integers this one will be owned and this one will be total and this will plug in here and this will plug in here right and then what will happen is let's say we own zero out of three so it'll be zero in this first bracketed part and then the slash and then total three so it will look like this what we also want to do here is in this number of sacred sites, let's make this zero space slash space three. So I'll put the default. That'll do what populates. And connect this. So when the player does capture a sacred site, we'll run this event and it'll update the scorecard. And the scorecard will be on everybody's HUD for every player. So you always know where other players are at. Um, and I think that'll be good. The other thing I might do here too is I'm going to grab this horizontal box. I'm going to put a padding of five, maybe 10. Yeah, padding of 10 up here. It just brings, right, as you can see right here's the horizontal box. It, it'll just give it a little bit of a, a kickback off of the border. Um, and actually, I lied. We do need one more variable. This variable will be the player color. And I think it is a variable type brush color. Uh, is it just brush? Let's see. If it's just brush and we come back and we grab our border. No. Uh, one second, let me look. Okay, it's a linear color. So come back and apply color, linear color this one then we come back border and brush and there it is player color perfect so you should have this coming through and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove the binding here for a second 
right? If this is what we want for the default color, I'm just going to right click this, copy it, and then go back to player color, and then come back to our graph, player color, and paste this. Okay. And that should be everything we need now for this. And now what we'll do is let's come back to our HUD widget. And let's see what have we been doing? Border. So let's add a border. Just drag this under our canvas panel. I'm trying to think about what the best way. Let's anchor this to the top right for sure. And I just want to use some similar. So like this one, we have 10 off of the left and 10 off of the, the bottom. So spacing at 10. So I'm going to do that over here too. Um, we want these sizes to be the same. So we have this 500 by 200. So let's see what this border looks like. If we do 500, 200 and bring this over. Okay, this is probably going to be way too big. Um, let's see what like a 250, 100. This might not be so bad, but we're going to have four of these stacked up. 275. Yeah, I think it's a little bit better. So let's go back into our player card. 275. Play around with these font sizes. Um, let's do 20 there for right now. And bring this down to like 18. And we're going to take this horizontal box padding back a little bit. You know, we're getting real small on space. Player name, let's drop this to 18 maybe. Put it back on fill. Let's be fill. Put this on auto. Whoops. And put this to 14. Okay. We'll see what this looks like. 18 for the player name. And we actually have player name go in the horizontal. The reason I'm doing fill here is because this is on auto, this will always take up the same amount of space, and then this will take up the same amount of space. It, it, it'll just help with the spacing because the player names will be uh, different amounts. So I think this will look best. Okay. So back in our hood then, this is good size. So let's do a position of minus 10. Let's see, minus 210. Y position of maybe 30, 50, 60, 70. Let's do 70. Okay. And this border. So this is what one of these will look like. I think what we actually need to do is, is make this big enough to house at least four. So we have a, si a Y size of 75. 75 times four would be 300. Okay. So then we can put four um, all stacked up. And what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to make this 310. I'm going to make this 210, so just a little bit bigger. Take this X position up to 220. And I'm going to drop a vertical box in here and give it a padding of 5. And this is an important step. And this vertical box, I'm going to rename it Vertical Box Player Card Cards and check this is variable. So this will allow us to access this in the graph. And then for the border, I'm going to grab one of our other borders, take this pop-up border, copy this, come back into this player card border, paste that. So that keeps the border consistency the same. And we'll just call this border player cards. Cool. So what we'll do now is every time a, a player um, logs in, we'll create their player card and I'll populate here. And I'll show you what that'll look like. So if we come in to player card, drop that here. It shouldn't be looking like this though.
Let's see what happens when we get four in here. Okay, so something is weird. It's player cards. Oh, the size box. Size box should be 200 by 75. There. Now if we compile this, go back to the HUD. There we go. Boom. If we get rid of these other ones. Here's what one would look like, right? Two player game, you know, like that, so on and so forth. So I think this looks uh, good. And we can see here when we look, right here's the player name. I think what we got to figure out actually in here is how do we want to handle player color? Um, let's add one more variable. This will be, whoops, an integer. And it'll be player. Uh, what, what have we been calling this? Like a team, team int. Make this an integer. And since we're narrow, let's make a function. Uh, call this team color. This team int. I'm gonna slide this up. I'm gonna make this instance editable. So bows on spawn. We'll get this and switch on int. We're going to have 0 through 3. It's four possible teams. And so I'll come into here quick. A main materials. Let's forget which team. I know one is blue, uh, two is red. Let's just see if we come out to three teams. It's just player two. Okay, three is green, so then four is yellow. So we'll have blue, red, green, yellow. So we can do it here. Let's just set this to a blue. Red, a green, make that like a darker green, then a yellow. Then just connect these. Cool. Okay. Easy enough. So let's come into our game mode, turn based. Um, so this is under A main blueprints game mode turn based, and I'm going to close a bunch of these events we have opened from uh, the last tutorial. And let's go into our, our event graph, and we have this event on post login. Right, notification that a player has successfully logged in and has been given a player controller. Right, so we have this logic where we're adding them to our price list or price list. Uh, uh, player controller list. Uh, we're setting their index, getting the number of players, and checking if we can start the game. Um, what we're going to do is, well, we got two ways. Set player index to see what this is. Okay, so I think what I'll do, right, we want to run an event to the player controller. Um, and maybe we want to do this for all player controllers. How do we get the player's name? We're doing get random player name. I think this will work fine. So what we're going to do for these purposes, normally I might do this a little bit different, but because of how we're setting the player name, I want to make sure it's in there. I'm actually going to do it off this begin play. This begin play will run uh, really kind of in tandem slash I think slightly behind this event post log login. Uh, because this happens when a player gets assigned to the player controller, thus the player controller will begin. So should go event log on, then um, uh, this start. And what we need to decide is this player index is what will decide the team color. And I don't know if that's going to happen before or after the random name. Um, so let's actually run the code off of the set player index. Well, actually, sorry, I'm kind of thinking about the best way to do this. We really want every player controller
Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a function in our game mode. Update player cards. Event graph. And I'm going to run this after our start game. Right, because the start game already has this delay. It's when all the players are in. Um, we'll start the game on that code of logic. Um, and then we'll do this update players. And what I'm going to do here is grab our PC list. It says this is all of our player controllers. I'm going to do a for each loop. And what we're going to have to do is then we'll have to run an event to the player controllers to update their HUDs. So in our player controller, let's do this via fu function, update player cards. Let's go back into our game mode, update player cards. And what we might just want to pass through is the entirety of the player controller list. So let's make that an input in here. Call this PC turn based. This is an object reference. Calls PCs. And this is important. Make sure you change this from single reference to an array. So it should look like this. And what that should allow us to do then is pass this PC list into this function. Okay, and then what we'll do is let's do a little test of this, right? So we have these two um, player controllers. First thing I want to do is clear um, player cards and then update player cards. Go into this clear. Okay, so with this clear, we have a vertical box, player cards, and we should be able to do a clear children. And before I run this, switch this back to two. Okay, so you can see top right, right, we have those default player cards. This should get rid of them. Actually, go back to our player controller. We've got to do a couple steps first. We should have our HUD. Yeah, okay. So let's grab our HUD widget. And then let's do clear player cards. Yeah, okay. That should be good. So it's our player controller turn based. You do this update cards player, clear the player cards, which is this event, and the game mode is running this event from here off of the start. Okay. Okay, it's worked for the server. You can see it's blank. I don't think it worked for the client though. And it didn't work for the client. because the client's running this via a server. Okay, so get rid of this here. This won't work. So the problem is the server, or the game mode only exists on the server, right? Widgets um, only exist on the client. And so the server is trying to access this HUD, but it can't for the client because the client client's widget only exists on the client side, not the server side. Um, and frankly, I should have known that before I made this function, but we can take this, cut it, go into our event graph, let's find some space and down here, and we will get rid of this, well, I'm just going to copy this, but we'll get rid of this function, and create custom event, custom, add custom event, Call that update player cards. What we want to do is under replicates have this run on owning client and reliable. And then add in our variable, which is our player 
controller PC turn based array. Hold this PCs. And now do this. Now back in our game mode, update player cards. Boom. I don't know why this variable didn't update. There. That, we have to compile this. Come back. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Now when we run this, here's the client. Good. They're gone. So that's just a test. Make sure this is working. Um, we can come back into this HUD and remove these defaults. Uh, we don't need them. Okay. So the reason I wanted this clear is I think it'll be easier for us to delete, like remove the player cards and then re-add them whenever we need to adjust them. So back into our HUD, what we'll now do is make a, and we already have it, a function update player cards. This needs a input. This input will be our PC turn based. Again, object reference, make this an array. I'll call this PCs, compile, save, PC turn based, um, off of our HUD, update player cards. No values to be returned. Okay. And then what I want to do here is we'll do a for each loop grab our vertical box player card trace over here um we'll do create a widget the widget will be our player card so what we made over here like this and then now we want to do add child, add child to vertical box. Here's the content and connect this through. Right. And so you can see some of our defaults, All right? Player name and, and team integer. So you come off this and grab player name. Oops, not get random player name. get player name and then what do we call it here uh, player index so I want our player guard instead of team int let's call this player index we should keep the uh, descriptions the same here so I do file or refresh all nodes there player index so I can get player index. Nope. Get player index. There we go. And pass this through. Pass this through. Okay. This should work. So let's give it a go. Okay. Some things are working and some are not. We got Jim and Alex, but the client can't see Jim and the server can't see Alex. We have a couple errors here. Alex is trying to read get item create widget. Let me think about this. Okay, so I had to change some things around. There was some replication issues with the server coming through, um, which made this a little bit more complicated than I originally wished. Um, all right, so I'm going to start on the player controller. You're going to need three events. One for clearing the player cards. This should be reliable and run on client. And all it's doing is your HUD, clear player cards, right? Nothing changing there, but just an independent event on its own. Second event you need 
um, run on owning client, reliable, add player card client. We changed the inputs for this event. So instead of passing the whole array through, which is where we're having issues and I played around with, with different things I couldn't figure it out, but this will work uh, just as fine. So instead we're gonna have a player name and an index. And to change that, if you go into this update player cards, you clear out a lot of what we had with the for each loop and get rid of your inputs. For your inputs, right, basically what we're gonna do is instead of adding all four of them in one function, we're gonna run this function four times, or well, if you have four players, two times if you have two, right, and add them one at a time. So really what we might make more sense is instead of update player cards, add player card. Right? It's singular. And so what we need for that player card right now is the player name and the player index. Those will create the player card widget and then we'll add that child. So hopefully that makes sense. So I'll leave this up on the screen here. You can pause if you want to make sure you get this right. And once you do that, you come into your player controller, refresh all nodes, compile. You should then be able to do this. So add the player card client and then you're gonna pass a player name and a player index to the HUD on that event. So the third event you have to add in your player controller, and this will run on the server and be reliable. This will be update player cards server. And so what we'll do from here, right? This will have the player controller array variable. We'll first clear the player cards on the client, which is this first event, which this is still untouched, right? Clearing all of the children that are under that um, um, vertical box. What will then happen is we'll do a for each loop on the player controller variable coming through. And from this loop, this is kind of what we were trying to do in the HUD widget before, but we're having issues. We'll get our player name and our player index, and then we'll run the add player card client, which is this. So this event will run for the number of players in the game, and we'll add the player card singularly. The last thing I changed is in our game mode, turn-based. Instead of running the old event we have, do the update player card server, which is this one. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, let me run through it one more time. Um, add player card in the HUD widget. Should look like this. Player controller should have three events. A clear player cards client, add player cards client, both replicated to run on owning client and reliable. And you should have an update player card server, which will clear the player cards and then do a for each loop, add player card client, and then in the game mode, update player cards to the update player cards server. Hopefully you're able to follow. And when you do that, we're passing everything through. So see so Jim, player one, Marcus, player two. Last thing we want to do is in our, up, um, our HUD widget, we're going to make a new function update background color and or did we already do that oh not our hood widget sorry get rid of that in your hood widget in our player card go to the graph and here we already did this okay so back in the hood widget what we'll do after we um, add actually before we add this child when we create it was it um what's it called team color off of this return give me team color connect this and then connect this so what this will do is when it's created we'll get the player index and then we'll do the team color and then we'll add it as a child but it'll set this color let's just make sure we have all of our bindings set so for the border should have binding player color Player name has a binding. Oh, this doesn't. Um, this kind of zero out of three. This should be. Whoops. This text should be bound to the number of sacred sites. Let me just see what I have at the default for there. Number of player sites should be default value zero of three. And actually, I'm going to leave this as zero of zero for right now. Um, just to make sure that this is all working. Cool. So this is what this will look like, right? Zero, zero, because that's the default. Um, what I would like to do is maybe make these a little bit more translucent. So what we can do is come into each of these 
and switch this alpha to, I don't know, 0.75, maybe. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to do it for all four. And number of sacred sites. I'm just going to switch this back to three. I just did the zero to zero just to make sure that this was coming through correctly. But by default, we've launched three. There. Man, that looks a little bit better. Um, cool. So I think we'll leave that at this for now. Um, in the next video, we'll actually add a, a work on um, capturing the sacred sites. And what that'll allow us to do then is and we'll update this number from zero to three to one to three to two to three. And then that will prompt the game over. Um, but you can kind of see the, the idea here, right? Um, and it's fairly easy then to add more pieces of information. So like you could make this, a, you know, as an example, wrap this with a vertical box and have this vertical box stretch the whole thing. And then below it, you could have a text. Um, if I could type, even this text would be same size, 14. But it would be something simple like gold, you know, uh, colon, zero. And we get really, really tight on space when we add in more. Yeah, but maybe this has to be even smaller. I don't want to eat. And maybe we set this to like that, right? So then you could pass through gold, right? W whatever other variables you wanted to do, um, you can do it in a similar fashion like that, right? And then that would come through on here. So some things we can do um, down the road if we want. But yeah, I'm going to wrap it up here. Hopefully that made sense. Sorry, kind of a discombobulated video. Um, I'll try to make it a little bit more streamlined going forward, but just let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Thanks for watching, and please like and subscribe. Um, again, I got the Discord up. Um, feel free to pop in there if you have questions. Discord's really nice compared to the comments on YouTube because you can actually post um, pictures, right? So I can kind of see the, the issues you're working with and help you uh, debug. But yeah, that's all I got for now. Thanks.